think my nose? No, um, Derek's a tough guy. I just, it was just a matter of time. He started getting tired, and you know what happens at the top end if you get tired. You start getting it, so it was a matter of time, and that's, that's what happened. You know, um, yeah. How about your own performance? Did you feel that, that, that you performed at a peak level tonight? I felt pretty good. You know, the cut, there wasn't much of a cut. I ate, I ate all the way up to the day before the, the weigh-ins. Um, I had a great camp. And uh, it was the main thing. I didn't really have to cut any weight. Uh, didn't cut anyway. And, and the, the day after, to, re to rehydrate the glycogen levels is pretty amazing. So, yeah, pretty, I felt pretty good with the performance. You mentioned all week long, and even tonight, you said if it did happen to be the last time, you're fine with it. Is there a possibility that had this not gone your way, had it been a loss, that you were truly considering maybe maybe quitting, maybe maybe calling it a career? Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I love to get beat up. Uh, you know, I mean, shucks, there's uh, nothing else I'm good at. <laughs> but, um, you know, i got a couple more fights I want to finish uh, my contract, and that's it. So, you know, you know, why not uh, see the contract up and then retire? Just two more? You still had, uh, I think so. I don't know. Three? All right. He's got three more. All right. And uh, last thing I want to ask you, I mean, you took a stand, and you've been on this thing, we got to get steroids out of the sport. Do you know what the right answer is for it? Is, is, is USADA the right thing? Well, uh, you know, I, I know you want the financial punishment to go up, but is it the right thing or what is the right steps to get it out it's the right thing you know jeff Nowinski is the right thing that's <laughs> that's the right thing right there no i i think uh taking away the financial gain to start with people say for me it's, it's a money hungry grab um i don't i mean in the a, in a sort of sense it is i think if, I, if you just take away the, the financial incentive then the cheaters wouldn't want to do it you know then, then they'll think twice oh well it's, if i get caught then you know if you take away the money they wouldn't do it it's just the clause in the contract saying the cheater doesn't benefit at all because right now it pays to cheat, but if you take that away, then it, then it makes it pretty even. I don't, I, it'll take a bit of time, and they'll just, no cheater will start cheating, uh, using steroids and shit. So that's the way I see it, you know, before someone, someone dies. Um, Mark, where does uh, fighting in your hometown, where does, how does this compare to other achievements you've had? Oh, man, not really. I mean, I've, I've, it's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's great to be fighting for this amount of time. My achievements are my kids, of course, always. Um, this is just, uh, I've been doing this 20 years, uh, 21 years as a pro at the top end of two different sports. 25 or six something years? I forget. <laughs> but a long time I started kickboxing. I had my first fight about a K down the road from here, ever, in a ring of Muay Thai. So, um, you know, to be back here with, with the biggest company in the world, UFC, in a different sport, it's pretty amazing, especially being the, the oldest guy. <laughs> the oldest guy <laughs> fighting. So, you know, 43 years old and... Um, you know, still getting it done. And and after the last performance against Overeem, where people were sort of counting you out, does it feel to, you know, prove that you still got it? Well, man, he's he's always going to be a cheating bum. That's what I thought. He, that's that's what he's always going to be to me, regardless whether he beat me. You know, I mean, he's always going to have that cloud over his head. All his achievements. You know, you don't know whether they're done by steroids or not. So, sorry, Alistair, you're a cheat. It's the bottom line. So. Hey, Mark, you're, as you say, you are the oldest guy. Um, you have taken a fair bit of punishment in the last few years. How much longer can you go on, mate? Well, I'm not slurring my speech and I'm still alive, so, you know, you, you can't kill me yet, man. <laughs> the old dog is still going, man. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm still beating the top end guys. I said if I can't start beating these guys, um, then I would retire, you know, if these guys are, you know, are, are too good for me. But, you know, uh, the last two guys are cheaters. And this guy here, you know, uh, he's number six and I beat him. So, I mean, he's younger than me. You know, I'm not going to – I don't like listening to anyone saying you can't do this, can't do this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a fighter. I wouldn't be one of the best fighters in the world. Mark, um, at the UFC uh, 200 open workouts, uh, you wore the UFC's We Are All Fighters T-shirt. Um, was that specifically to show support for the LGBT community? And why was that important to you? What T-shirt? Uh, the We Are All Fighters T-shirt that you wore to the open wo workouts at UFC 200. Uh, to be honest, uh, you want the honest okay. question or you want the lies? Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a T-shirt I was given, so. Sweet. Okay. All good. <laughs> uh, Mark, amazing win tonight. I just want to know what's going to be the go-to meal tonight after the weigh-in. What a smart prick you are. <laughs> I've got some Polynesian food at uh, the, the gym waiting. You know, I love. I was going to take my boys out to have some KFC, some steak and cheese pies, maybe, maybe a couple of long donuts. I don't know. Do you mean um, um, a Big Mac from McDonald's? You mean? Well, 
Whatever you want. <laughs> oh, please. Um, Mark, how much did the uh, the home crowd cheering you on? How much did that spur you on tonight? It's great. You know, um, I had a rough go from 60 minutes to about 12, actually about 15 years ago, now a bit longer. I uh, didn't get no help from then on in. Um, and, um, you know, to be coming out to walk in with my country of birth is pretty amazing, the support. You know, I've been 21 years here uh, in New Zealand, Kiwi, and um, 22 years in Australia. So, you know, I, I, it, was, it was a great feeling to walk out. Um, it's kind of a surreal feeling. It's better than drugs. Way better. <laughs> better than steroids, Jeff Nowinski. But it's <laughs> no. Do you guys know who Jeff Nowinski is? No, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, if you want to know, I'll turn up. <laughs> Um, and how's your left leg doing? It was looking a bit, uh, bit iffy out there. It's fine. Um, like the arm, like the eye, it's fine. If it's not broken, then I'll still be good. Uh, Mark, good performance tonight. Uh, you mentioned before the sort of 44 hours you had between weigh-in and fight. Did that make a difference? And do you think that's something you'd like to see more often, the, the big gap between weighing in and fighting? I think that's great. Uh, uh, a few fighters have died from weight cuts. I know what it's like. It's hard. Um, I got beat, beat up. I think I got nearly five or 400 punches in the head from Stipe one time in Adelaide. I, I cut 11 kilos in a day. It's, it's not good. Um, you won't get a good performance out of any fighter cutting weight like that. Um, I, think, um, I think it's a great idea. It, it gives the fighters a chance to re rehydrate, put on a great performance, and um, not die. <laughs> um, now, you've, you've put Australasian mixed martial arts on the map with, with, your, with your career, and two young Kiwis fighting tonight, and there's a couple of young Australians as well. Like... You know, for you do, you, do you look at, I mean, you probably didn't have time to look at the fights, I don't know, but do you look at that with, with a bit of pride that they may not have been here if it wasn't for someone like you, you know, paving the way? Uh, yeah, to be honest, but they, they made their own way here, you know. They didn't, uh, I didn't drop blood for, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> they dropped their own blood to get here, you know. So, um, you know, kudos to them. I can't take the credit for their, for their, for their accomplishments, just mine. But, yeah. Uh, Mark, I know you're always pretty loath to call guys out, but you said you want to fight anyone above you, and I think Velasquez is about the only guy left that's above you that you haven't fought. I mean, do you have an opponent in mind, though, that you'd like to see again? Hopefully JDS. I can get JDS for, for Japan. You know, I'd like a rematch with him. Oh, Alistair, one of those two. Okay. And uh, when's anyone the Japan card? What's that? When is the Japan card? Or um, September 23rd. Okay. And uh, you feel in terms of health and stuff like that, you'd be good to go around that time of the year? Yep. Cool. I'm always ready to go. I feel like I have to redeem myself after that question, Mark. Um, it's been an amazing journey, obviously, since you got spotted outside the nightclub all those years ago. You've since been to Japan, won the K1, released a book. It feels like a lot's happened since the book, and we could almost see another book or another story. Is there going to be um, something we can see afterwards to, to see everything that's happened since the release of your book? Um, you know, they're, they're, I think they released it out in England, then Japan, just got to translate. Where are you going, no? No. Um, yeah, so England uh, released and uh, Japan um, getting released there, just got it translated. Um, I was just doing a doco, just finishing this. Probably if I'd lost this fight, I'd probably the doco would be finished. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the career still continues. I was just asked, I was in when I finished if I got fired already, but no, he said, no, I'm cool, so we're cool. I think it's uh, called uh, Born to Fight, like the book, Born to Fight. 